everybody. Welcome. How are you? Hope you're having a wonderful day. So what are we doing today? Well, we're having a double feature. That's what we're doing. But I have some good news. The good news is one of the videos that I'm reacting to is Chantal. She's not eating. She's just talking. We'll review that one first for those who don't want to see her eat. And the second video, well, she is eating a meal that, according to her, is more diabetic friendly. So the first video that I'm going to be reacting to is called I Have Some Important Things to Say. And the second one is Diabetic Recovery Meal. I forget what the title is. But so it's going to be a double feature today because I just don't see the sense of doing two videos, one right after the other. And my mouse just fell. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Mouse, stay where you're supposed to stay. All right, there you go. Okay, cool. So I got some thoughts before we get into both videos. When she put out the first video, the diabetic recovery video, I went online to see if diabetic recovery was actually a thing or it was something that she made up. And the research that I did, there is no such thing as diabetic recovery. Now, there is such a thing as diabetic remission, and that's when you keep your blood sugar low for quite a few months, and then it might go into remission. I believe that's for type 2 diabetes. If I'm wrong about that, please correct me in the comments. I certainly do not want to give out any misinformation. But nowhere did I find that there is such a thing as diabetic recovery. I also saw on Twitter uh, that she called the video diabetic recovery. But one of the tags that she used for that video was BED recovery. There is such a thing as BED recovery, but not diabetic recovery, only diabetic remission. And as long as she's got her ongoing problem with food, which is completely out of control, she's not going to be in recovery for that either. And she cannot claim recovery over that until she goes to counseling. She checks herself into an inpatient facility, and she's been there for quite a while. Uh, Foodie, can I just say that I think it's absolutely disgusting that you are using the word recovery when you're someone that you are active with your problem? As long as you're active, you cannot be in recovery for anything. Not for your problem with food, not with your problem with party favors. Using the word recovery means that you were not well and now you are well. And we can all see that you're not well. You're very, very sick. But for you, being sick is content. It gives you something to talk about. It gives you a way to connect with people. Also, for anyone who might be a VIB coming over here watching this video, I would like to say to you that Foodie likes to pretend that she cares about all of you over there. But if she really did care, she would take care of her health. She would do what she needs to do to get better. She's certainly got the money, the time, the energy, and the resources, and she continues to make bad choices. If you want my honest opinion, I think Foodie takes great joy in stressing out the people who care about her, whether it's someone that's close to her as far as her family or somebody online that has come to her channel and likes her for whatever reason. She likes to keep people on edge. She likes to make people worry. If she were completely healthy, if she were on track, people wouldn't worry about her. And Foodie does like for people to worry over her and she uses worry and stress to keep people tuning into her channel to see what's coming next. And Foodie, if that is your way of keeping your views up and keeping the money flowing in, can I just say that's a very negative way to make money, playing with people's emotions like that? Well, I'm going to get off my soapbox now. I just want to give my thoughts. So let's go over to the good people on Twitter because there are some interesting tweets that I found on Twitter. I'd like to share them with all of you. So... Let me pull up my Twitter. All right. Where are we? I just have to make sure that I am where I need to be. All right. So for those of you that are on Twitter and you want to join me on Twitter, it's Wild Girl Sarah. 
So this first tweet is from Michael B. Petty. Michael B. Petty says, I guess Ozempic is the only drug that can be used to treat type 2 diabetes. This is just another excuse for her to not be accountable. So she can continue to gorge herself on the food that makes her feel something. It's either Ozempic or nothing. Well, I'm not a diabetic, but I would imagine there's all kinds of medications she could take to help her. But even if she went to the best doctor and she got the best medication, Foodie's never been good about taking her medication as directed. Even if she got the medication and the doctor, there's an old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. So all the specialists in the world, all the doctors in the world, all the advice in the world, the first thing that needs to happen is her caring about her life and her health. If that doesn't happen, then nothing else matters. But let's look at this picture that Michael included with his tweet. Uh, Prince Beezer says, I don't know why you're so against medication. It can prolong your life. You clearly haven't been able to get on track your way. Absolutely true. <clears throat> uh, Anna says, right? If a person isn't able to stick a little bit to a specific diet and so totally gets medication too, then what do they want? Suddenly a magic cure? I mean, everybody has the right to blank themselves as much as they want. Again, Foodie, the reason why she's not taking the medication, the reason why she's not seeking any kind of treatment for her problems, she doesn't want to be healed because she looks at all of her pains and all of her illness and all of her suffering as something to talk about, something to glorify, something to put into the spotlight because she wants people to worry for her. If you're someone and you're a sub to Foodie, you must know that by now, that you're never going to be able to log on to Foodie's channel and her do a stream where she says, I feel great. I'm healthy. Life is good. I went out and had a walk today. I ate a good meal. I'm losing X number of pounds. My blood pressure has gone down. I know you guys are waiting around for that. You're hoping so hard, but understand that your hopes are in vain because it's got to start with her. She's not interested in turning things around and, and turning a corner. She's interested in walking in circles with herself and keeping you walking in circles with her. Uh, but Foodie's reply was, I am just afraid of it causing some kind of weird other illness. I don't know. What illness could it possibly cause? I mean, can it get any worse? Foodie, let's go over the checklist of things that we know about. And there might be more because you haven't been the doctor in the longest. You have, by your words, you had a liver three times the size of normal. And that was long ago. It might be bigger now. You have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. You have blood clots in your lungs for which you should be taking blood thinners. Uh, your kidneys are a mess. Diabetes. Uh, breathing problems lack of mobility. I mean, every part of you is messed up. Also, you mentioned you had an enlarged heart. So by your calculations, every single one of your major organs is in trouble. And you're worried about taking a medication that might help you to get on top of your weight, which would take the strain off of maybe some of your organs to where they could function better and do better. Uh, Foodie also says with all the lawsuits going on with those Zempec, yeah, but the only reason why you were trying to go on Ozempic because you keep looking for the magic cure. You want to do so much damage to your body for such a long time, and then you expect to take a pill or a shot or an operation, and that's going to shave, what, 300 pounds off your frame? That you're going to get skinny overnight? Honestly, the weight, believe it or not, is the least of your problems. Yes, it is very, very bad. But you're being excessively overweight. That is simply the result of the bee monster going wild for too long. So, yes, the weight needs to be dealt with. It needs to be put under control. You need to lose some of it. But more importantly, you need to take that bee monster and put it in a cage for a long, long time. 
because until you do, it's going to be running amok and just causing all kinds of problems. You know, so you, if you want to start with your problems, start from the top, work your way down. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Katie says, in moderation, but still eating off of serving dishes, so the portions are still outrageous, right? Well, that's something you just got to do. Hold, it, hold on a second. Here. Not to... Shut up, foodie. So there's a clip from the second video that I'm going to be reacting to. As you can see, she's still eating off the serving platter. I told you guys this before, some of my reacts. If you're someone who's trying to be mindful of the portions that you're eating, take away the big bowls, take away the big plates, take away the big glasses, because when something is overly large, you will automatically overeat and overconsume just because of that. So she likes to eat with a serving spoon, the big platter, and yes, she does have a small portion of food on the platter, but because it's this great big platter, do you know what's going to happen? She's going to eat that food. And after she finishes it, she's going to say, I'm still hungry. You know, with most of that plate being empty, it's going to prompt her to eat more. And what did we see her buy on that grocery haul? Tons of candy, lots of fruit juice, things that she really shouldn't have guarantee you after she's done eating this she might uh, go in the kitchen or wherever those snacks are stored and uh, start munching away if you got temptation foods in the house if they're within reaching distance or too close the safest place for temptation foods to be is outside the home because if they're more of a pain in the butt to get to you're less likely to get to them all right next <laughs> <laughs> from Lauren. Yeah, that's not foodie. That's not a picture of foodie. That's highly filtered foodie. Big eye filter, skin smoothing filter, contour filter, filters all day. Um, so I guess foodie is asking more money on Scamio. She's asking $10 for her to answer a message from somebody. Why would anybody pay $10? to get a question answered by Foodie. Honestly, if you want Foodie to answer a question, do it for free. Wait till she does a live chat or put it in the comments because she does scroll through her comments. She answers people in the comments. My advice, don't bother with a scamio. Just put the question in the comments and pay nothing. That's just my, that's just my opinion. Uh, Miss Anthropope says, tell me you're not paying bots for comments without telling me you're not big bots for comments an 18 minute video and the comments were coming in three minutes after she posted <laughs> well foodie's been caught before buying subs in real time buying engagement buying views so yeah I, I, i'm sure she's buying some help with her her videos which is weird because foodie you want to make money but you're spending money just to get a little bit of engagement, to get a few subs. And you know YouTube's going to catch you. They always do. You're just wasting money, girl. Wasting big money. Uh, Peony says, who serves candy and juice to adults? I think if they were having guests, it would be cheese, nuts, dried fruit, and some sort of tea. This is for someone with her palate. I agree. I think it's very strange that you have a husband he's got guests that allegedly come over i would imagine that they would be adults as well and yet you're going to treat them like children and serve them fruit juice and candy that's either a for you foodie or b is he bringing children over because that stuff seems like it's snacks for young children i think it's a little bit of both i think there might be a lot of that is for you, but if there's some young people coming over, maybe that may be appropriate for them. Yeah, so this was like from the, this is supposed to be her haul, and the second one is Salah's haul. It, it, and I'll just say this again Salah, you know her issue with food, bro. You know, you got firsthand knowledge of that. You see it up close. 
in real time, knowing that she's got a sweet tooth like nothing else, that she can sit there and eat sugary stuff like nobody's business, why bring this stuff in the house? Unless foodie is completely intolerable and you're just giving this stuff to her to pacify her. I think that might be going on there too. Like she must be a hellion to put up with when she has her little sugar fit. So this is his way of keeping her quiet. You know, like here's your snacks, here's your juice, here's your little, you know, computer, go away. <laughs> Treating her like a, like a naughty kid. <laughs> Uh, pizza necklace of shame. Cat lady says, I left a comment about her hiding behind filters and she responded. I'm sure I'll be blocked now more than likely. Uh, cat lady says, then why do you hide behind so many filters? I'm confused. She says, I literally don't. My phone has a slight skin smoothing filter in the camera. Most times I do show my entire body. No filters compared to the most social media people. I barely use any Chantal Chantal. You use a lot of filters, mama. And as far as showing off your body, you do all you can to not show your entire frame. You'll have that camera like right here, like showing from like your face down to like the top part of your chest and no further. You know all about those camera angles. You know about the angles to make you look thinner or more narrow. You'll use those narrow filters as well your skin is not that smooth. The only reason why it looks that smooth is because of tons of filters. And, and here's proof. Thank you. Your agitation saying, does anyone else forget the circumference of her head and get a fun shock when you see it again? <laughs> Florida salt and sass. Thank you. This is a real picture of Chantal. What did I say to y'all before that picture that she does of herself? where like the top part of her head is round and then the bottom part is like a diamond shape. This is more accurate. The entire face is round. You know, that's more symmetrical. That makes much more sense to me. But that that is not Chantal with an elf look. <laughs> okay, so that's it for everything on Twitter. So let's just get out of here. And then we'll move on to, okay, what did I go on that for? All right. Sorry, I'm like just flipping between screens here. Maybe you just. Shut up, Chantal. Did I summon you? No, be quiet. All right. So, yeah, there's her little scamio. We'll get past all that. Let me just get past it so we don't have to hear her because nobody cares about the scamio. Nobody. So, this is. This is Chantal's little tea talk, her little tea time. Let's see what she has to say, shall we? What's Foodie got to say that she's got to share it with all of us? This might be the only episode. We'll see. <laughs> you know how I am. But I basically um, wanted to talk about, um, you know, it's called tea talk. <laughs> At least this one episode is. And I'm just going to have some tea and talk about um things that are on my mind you know use you guys as kind of a diary and just talk about stuff that's on my mind and my life and things that i want to talk about you know so today is going to be a you know i would like to point this out real quick before she gets deep into things so when foodie does her mukbangs her regular videos when she has the opportunity to sit and talk to the audience and engage them at the same time she's eating, oftentimes she doesn't. She'll sit there and inhale her food. And more than once she has said, I, I just don't know what to say. I have nothing to talk about. A 10 minute video and she has absolutely nothing to talk about. Now she wants to do tea talk videos. So in the regular videos, you had nothing to say. Suddenly you do. All right, let's see. Let's see if you, if you can, you know, come up with a task subject um about um i guess a comment that really makes me reflect uh that i see a lot and it's the comment is and i've seen it many many times and it i still get this and it's that 
Um, we miss, we miss yeah, the you know what, Cody? Like, I'm going to give you a little bit of critique. Take it or not take it. But you're doing a tea talk video. You know, like you're talking to the audience as if they were sitting right in front of you. How about leave out the jazz lounge music? Not that there's anything wrong with the jazz lounge, the Starbucks, you know, establishment music, nothing wrong with it, but you're sitting down to talk to your audience. So why have the music on top of that? Just say what you got to say to where everybody can hear you. Beauty. People go through different phases of life. They go through growth. A human being is supposed to grow as a person and the past you know we're supposed to learn from it and take what we need and and leave the rest behind you know now for me a lot of my past in the past couple of years uh past few years even is completely dead to me like it's all right so I let her say what she wanted to say there for a minute. I let her have the floor. Now she's got to sit down so I can have the floor. It's been over a year, Foodie. You've been in Kuwait for over a year. I've been watching you for a long time. I've been reacting to you for a long time. And I can honestly say with no hate, just reporting the facts, ma'am, there has been no real positive growth with you. The only growth that has happened has been an increase in your weight. I don't know what happened in Kuwait. Maybe you're eating because you're bored. You have nothing to do, but you've gained at least 100 pounds since you've been in Kuwait. Like you're bigger than you've ever been. That's the only growth that has happened. If any other kind of growth had occurred, I would credit you. And I would say, yeah, she's grown in this certain way. But you're not only exactly the same, you're actually worse. As far as the way you deal with things, as far as the way you handle things, you have less mobility than you ever had in Canada. You had more mobility in Canada. Uh, your weight was much lower. You're still the same insecure, jealous, control freak that you were when you were with Natter. And for someone that has let go of their past, you brought up Natter just recently. This person that you claimed hurt you. Although, in my opinion, I don't think he did even have the things you claimed. And the hurt went both ways. Not sticking up for him, I'm just saying. But you have not grown, not in a positive way. You've not become better. You've not become more mature. You've not become more experienced. You've not grown. If you had grown, then you would have wised up and realized the best thing you can do is get out of Kuwait and go back home to Canada. Because this whole situation in Kuwait, it's not beneficial to you, but you're determined to hang on to a man that does not love you, is not attracted to you, and only wants you around for your paycheck. It is what it is. It's the truth. Hanging on to something that wants nothing to do with you except for the money. And I've realized this. I've had to grieve it. And by the way, um, I've gone through Shut up. Also, sub note, do I think that her being used by Salah and milked for money by Salah and whatever suffering, whatever hurt she's going through, quite, is that karmic justice for the pain that she caused people around her, her family, her pets, Pete's? Yeah, I think it's appropriate. I think it's very appropriate. This is a woman throughout her entire life she has done nothing but hurt people. She bullied her sister. She's caused pain to her family. She used and abused Pete. Uh, 
anything that came within within five feet of her that had a heartbeat was negatively affected. There's not a single person nor being that can look at Chantal and say, I was made better for knowing her. Anything living that gets around her suffers and is neglected, even non-living things. And you know what? That is such a great picture of her. <laughs> I'm going to hold on to this for later for the thumbnail in case I might find something better later, but we're going to hold on to that. I'm just taking a little screenshot. Y'all give me a second. All right, cool. Got it. But go ahead, Chantal, please say what you got to say. Through a lot of grief, I've gone through a lot of processing. And for me, I think I've gone through a lot of self growth. And maybe I don't discuss that enough online. So I don't mind talking on, uh, more about certain subjects like that. But today I'm going to focus more on, you know, I could talk about different areas of my life where I have grown and have improved. Um, but you I, know, she says that she's grown, but she hasn't said how she hasn't said how she's grown. What caused her to grow? What were the life lessons that she realized? What were the wake up moments? She says, I have grown dot, 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 but where are the examples you've grown? How you realized what, you know why she's not telling us because it never happened. It, um, other than my weight issue, you know, literally, um, that, you know, I talk ad nauseum about that. You know, she brings up the weight, ladies and gentlemen, she puts a spotlight on her weight because as long as the spotlight is on the pounds and the weight and how big she is, nobody's paying attention to the greater issue. She doesn't have to pay attention to it. The bee monster, which is up here. The root of that evil is in her head. Let's focus on the weight. Let's focus on the pounds. People online, they bully me. They talk about my weight at the same time I exploit my weight. She exploits her weight. She puts, she puts tags on her videos to invite people that are interested in those who eat food to come and visit her. She signals all the feedy people. So it's okay for her to do that, but yet when she gains weight, nobody's allowed to talk about it. The weight is a great issue, but the greater issue is the cause behind it. And the cause behind it is the bee monster. But she doesn't want to put a rope on it and lasso it in. She's letting it run around. Um, that's evident because that's a problem on the outside that's very visible, <laughs> you know. But internal issues that you can't see um, that I'm more comfortable that I'm comfortable with talking about now. I don't mind. Um, so I think that the 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 me that you guys miss. I don't think that was the real me. So I've done some reflection on that. And I was thinking like, well, guess what? The person we're seeing right now in this video is not the real you either. This is the you that you became so that a man who doesn't love you would accept you and be around you. You thought if you put on an abaya, you put on a hijab, you cosplay something you're not, that he would stand and be around you for more than five minutes. Also, you confess to us the reason why you wear the abaya and the hijab is because of the increase in weight. You have an embarrassment for your weight, Chantal. You are embarrassed. And the more you get embarrassed, the more you hide yourself away. And now you're at a point where the abayas and the hijabs, they can't hide anything for you anymore. And who is calling me? Stop it. <laughs> Stop that. Anyway, sorry about that. So if you don't know who you are, maybe you should look into that. Am I fake? Like you are fake. What is the real me? Because I'm still discovering. That's a good question. Who is the real Chantal? Well, the real Chantal, please stand up if you can. Can you stand up? Can you walk across the room so we know it's you? Who's the real Chantal? Because every time you get with a dude, you change your personality. 
to be accepted by them. You wrap all your self-worth in a man. You were a different person with BB than you were with Pete's. You were a different person with Natter than you are with Salah. I mean, every time you get with a dude, you become a different person. You have no sense of self-identity, something that you hold on to for just you. You're always looking towards a guy you like to know how to behave and how to be and who you should be as a person. And if you're with the right person, they will love you for you. But I think you know deep down that you're a vulgar, evil, vile individual. That there is nothing inside or outside of you that would make a man want to love you and be with you forever. You lack many qualities. You lack morals. You lack values. You are morally bankrupt. So because you're so empty and lacking in those things, you try to make up for it by being a chameleon and being whatever it is a man wants you to be, to be accepted by them so you'll have some companionship. Bring who I am in a lot of ways, but I have done a lot of that self-discovery. I, I have to say, I think that the foodie beauty you're missing in a lot of ways was a foodie beauty that was meant to entertain you. That was a kind of a persona. Now, not all of it, not all of it. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up, Chantal. Thank you so much. Because by you using the word persona, you just open the floor to something that I've said before. This is just my thought, y'all. I think once upon a time at the beginning of her channel, there was the person, Chantal Marie. But then the person created the persona, Foodie Beauty. She created a role for herself on YouTube. And then once her channel started to take off and the views and the monetization happened and she started making money, little by little, she abandoned the person, Chantal Marie, and she dove headfirst into the pool named Foodie Beauty. The persona Foodie Beauty has everything the person Chantal does not. In Chantal's real life, she's completely alone. Nobody wants to be around her. Nobody wants to talk to her. She's very secluded. But online, Foodie Beauty can log on to her channel and people want to talk to her. They ask her how she's doing. They give her adoration. The person, Chantal Marie, has bankruptcies, has a hard time hanging on to money. The persona, Foodie Beauty, makes a YouTube paycheck. Enough that she can buy three to four thousand dollars worth of junk food or party favors or dispensary visits or whatever else. You know, she's living in her persona, but she's forgotten about the person. Hence why the person has so many issues that are untreated. She wants to just push that away. She doesn't want to acknowledge the person. She just wants to live completely in the role of foodie beauty. Foodie. Listen, even the most professional, well-paid actors and actresses, the ones that star in movies or TV shows, they play a role. Yes, they do. But then after the cameras are turned off, they go to the dressing room, they take off their makeup, they put on their street clothes, and they go home. You can't stay on stage forever. You're getting lost in the role and the persona that you created for yourself. Hence why you're having a hard time connecting with your true self. You got to get off stage, foodie. At some point, you got to get off. I do have a very silly side. And that still does come out once in a while. But I find that it's not nat as natural as it was. A lot of the time, you want to know dancing around. Wait, shut up. You want to know why you're having a hard time letting it out? Because of that idiot salad. Because of him. You got to watch what you say. Not just because you're in Kuwait. Because you got this dude saying you can't do this and you can't do that. Don't rage on your channel. Ironically, he wants to benefit off the money that you make. But yet he is he's stopping you 
for doing the one thing that would make the most money. He's not okay with a rage, but he's completely okay with you getting on camera and gorging yourself stupid, which is contributing to your bad health. I mean, just think about that for a minute, foodie. Just think about it. He won't let you rage, which would require no calories, which would be entertaining for your audience and those of us reactors. But by raging, you're not consuming calories. You might actually burn a few calories, but gorging yourself stupid, oh, good to go. Green light. I'm acting silly, all these things. I really did it just to have fun and entertain you guys. But now I feel like older. Like I really feel that in the past year, I've matured a lot. What? <laughs> What'd she say? <laughs> I've matured a lot. Oh, really? Oh, really? Um, how? How have you matured? You still act like a giant toddler. You still throw temper tantrums. You are still insecure and jealous and possessive and a control freak. And if Salah wants to go to the store, He's got to show you pictures of where he is every couple of minutes so that you don't get scared that he's talking to somebody else. How have you matured? Being mature would mean you're more independent. You're doing things for yourself. What do you do for yourself? Absolutely nothing. All the grocery shopping, he does that. You stay in the car. What do you do for yourself, foodie? You're in a position right now that your health is so bad that basically Salah's role is to be kind of a, a bit of a caretaker. Because you know at this point in time, you can't be alone. You can't be left alone. You need help doing simple things like tying your shoes. You can't do things yourself. You don't, it, Honestly, you don't want to. If you want my opinion, y'all, I think maybe somewhere in Foodie's head, maybe that's her idea of the ultimate happy life, perhaps being bed bound and not having to go anywhere or do anything and have somebody take care of her. Well, that can be a double edged sword, foodie, because if the person you're depending on decides they don't want to do it anymore and they walk away, you're screwed. And from everything I've seen of Salah, there's no love there. I think he'd get overwhelmed and he would leave. Leave you there all by yourself in the apartment. And then what you going to do? Um, in a lot of ways. And that's, I think I've learned a lot of hard lessons about life. And like I said, I've had to grieve my past. Um, but wait, wait, wait. That makes no sense. What she just said does not make any sense to me. I had to grieve my past. When you generally, when you grieve over something, you're mourning the loss of someone or something you loved or you liked. But Foodie has come on camera yelling and screaming and crying about how bad her past was. She was so unhappy. It was so dark. So if it was just that bad, why are you mourning the loss and grieving the loss, Foodie? It's because there's part of you that wants that life back. You want your freedom back. You will never say it. You'll never say it out loud because there's something in you that it's, being right is more important than being healthy. You don't ever want to admit when you are in the wrong or you're doing wrong. Even if you get caught, even if you're caught red handed and the proof is there in front of you, you will never say you're right. I was wrong. You don't know how to apologize. You don't know how to say, I'm sorry. Now, if you did those things, that would show true growth because it takes some strength to say, I'm sorry. I apologize. I was wrong, but not you. You got to be on that hill and nobody's going to push you off. My cup kind of matches. <laughs> I've had to kind of grieve a lot of things. And that made my trip back to Canada the last time I was there very hard. Um, my life in Canada was a sh in shambles 
And I think a lot of people forget that. I think that that was very entertaining okay. for you guys. Wait, wait, wait. Some people found me entertaining. They found me. Shut up, foodie. <sighs> Her life was in shambles. Why was it in shambles? Those of us that are around for the Crackhead Olympics, we remember. But why was it in shambles? Because she chose to involve herself with a crackhead, a mean, nasty crackhead. She chose that. She would go to his house. Every time she went, it was by choice. Chose to get into back and forth online arguments with this man. They would practically tag team each other on YouTube. One would do a stream, then the other would do a stream, and it would literally go on all night. Is she talking about the shambles that she made of her financial life by acquiring not just one bankruptcy, but two of them? And although I have heard no evidence of this, no receipts, I keep hearing about how when she moved out of the villa, that because Pizza's name was on the lease, not hers, that she left him on the hook for all those damages to the tune of $5,000. Again, don't have any receipts for that. But I do believe, given the fact that she was just nasty and disgusting, there was cat poop all over that carpet, there was a lot of damage to that place. And I'm sure Pete's got a very big bill. Uh, even before she moved out of Canada, I kept saying, Pete's is going to get a big bill for this. They're going to have to rip out the carpet. They're going to have to repair all the appliances. I remember them saying that the plumbing in the bathtub was stopped up. So that had to be fixed. Plus, since Foody was smoking meth in the house or other chemicals, they would have to decontaminate the, the paint. I mean, there was a lot that had to be done. So a $5,000 repair bill doesn't sound uh, too long of a stretch. But she loved Pete's to deal with all that mess. She created that mess by just running around and running away from the mess that she created. Silly, they found me open. Um, I would talk about everything, you know, nothing was private for me. Nothing was sacred. I just, and nothing still is, but everything out. And, you know, uh, you know, I've said this before, but I repeat myself. There's a lot of value in not telling everyone what's going on in your life. The only people that really need to know are people who are actually really close to me in life. And I like it that way. I like my valued privacy that I didn't have before. And I think that's one thing that you guys miss, obviously, is my pride is not being so private because it was entertaining. You know, there was always tea. There was always drama in my life. There was always something going on that people you had what? to. You know what, foodie, as far as the tea and the drama, mama, you were rolling around in that dirt. Like a pig rolls around the mud. You were enjoying every minute of it. You were trying to think of new ways to get people to watch you. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. You know, you just kept escalating things and escalating things until you literally hit the ceiling on shocking drama and ideas. You went as far as you could possibly go. And so, because you did... The only place to go would be the complete opposite way. You know, you came on YouTube, you showed us all of your private parts. You flashed us multiple times, showing us things that we did not need to see. We never asked to see. Nobody in your audience asked to see that either. You did every gross thing you could think of, every shocking thing, every offensive thing. So once you've done that, where do you go? You, you got to play Miss Modest because after all of that, that might be a little shocking. You're all about the shock and the drama. It just, you know, lit people. I remember hearing reactors say, we literally have to like, it's interrupting our lives. There's so much going on. We have to get up in the middle of the night when Foodie Beauty goes live. Because hey, she, that did happen. For those who weren't around for that time period, that happened. 
Crack Olympics was wild. Wild. From a reactor standpoint, it was hell. Trying to keep up with this one. It was. That's when she was doing massive amounts of the party powder. She was using it to give herself energy, keep herself from eating. I would wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning. And already she's got two videos or two lives that I have to review. And I'd be like, doggone it. <laughs> so I'd get started immediately. I would get those two done. Here's two more. Get those two done. Here, here's two more. I would literally be going from 8 o'clock in the morning till 12 o'clock that night just trying to keep up. It was weird. She would turn on the camera and she would just go for a couple of hours, shut it off two hours. It, it, we were all tired. All the reactors were exhausted. And then trying to keep up with the lives and the videos that she did where she dirty deleted. Oh, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. And she was always trying to sneak around us and tiptoe around us. And, oh, I'm going to stream at a very late hour because most of the reactors will be asleep. And then I could just dirty delete. But despite her best efforts, somebody would have the video. And we'd all catch up to it. We know what happened. Or Kiwi Farms would have it. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. I'll be the first to say I lost 20 pounds during the crack Olympics because of just, just sitting there in front of my computer, just reacting all day. I did. I lost 20 pounds because of foodie. Isn't that something? Because I would just go live at impromptu times. Um, and just literally wake up, go live, and, and take you everywhere with me, you know? And yep. there was just, there was a lot of, I was like invading my own privacy by doing that in a lot of ways, you know? Um, and shut up. I was never one to really air my relationships online. I was very private, and I still am now with that, with my husband and I. Um you know, she's complaining about, I was invading my own privacy. Yeah, but you were also making those twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a month paychecks for a few months, weren't you? That whole natter thing, that's when you made the most money. You were living high on the hog. You were spending money like it wasn't a thing. You wouldn't think twice about going to the dispensary and spending a couple of grand. You know, you did that like, like several times a week or ordering stuff online to have be delivered to your house. You confessed to us that you spent $4,000 a month just on junk food. Yeah, dropping that money, buying that or all the stuff he wanted. And now, now look where we are. We are at the arc where Foodie is talking about being frugal. And, you know, everything's expensive. Trust me, if she had the money, she wouldn't be complaining about money. But being involved with somebody who's uh, abusive, that, that was a different story. You know what, Foodie? I got a personal message for you. This is for no one else but you. This is not for my subs. This is not for anybody else's subs. I, I just have to do this. I'm getting the urge. And you know what? Since it's during the holiday season, how about a two for one special? Okay. That's what I think of you and your talk about, oh, he hurt me. I don't think he did. I really don't think so. And I think if he did hurt you, you were the big idiot for going over there and going back and forth when you didn't have to. Could have blocked his number, could have not gone over there, and whatever arguments, whatever drama that happened would not have happened. I don't think he did even half the stuff you said he did. You had no fear of him. You kept continuing to talk about him and to him. You kept provoking him. You're a big old liar is what you are. That's, I had no problem airing everything out. I think that those instances should definitely be exposed. You know, but that was my situation when I was in Canada. I was involved with somebody. Um, I was involved in a very toxic, um, narcissistic, abusive situation. But and alhamdulillah, I'm and you know what's funny? She's sitting there bringing this up. And usually when you think about something or mention something from your past, that's traumatic, that's painful. You start thinking about it in your head. The memories start coming back. 
if they're really bad and really traumatic, you'll start reliving it in your mind. And you'll start to get upset all over again. You'll have that visceral reaction. She ain't. That's how I know she's a phony. So thankful to be out of. I was starting to believe in God, but the most of my time in Canada, I wasn't religious. And um, I would just be consuming, consuming, ordering large, you know, box mountain. I had box, heaps of boxes in my home because. Oh, yeah. we. <laughs> Everybody remember the box mountains. Oh, that was that was almost iconic. She started out with one box mountain of a pile of Amazon boxes that literally went from floor to ceiling in one room. And then we transcended that to multiple box mountains. There was one in her bedroom. There was one. <laughs> she doesn't even have to climb my Everest. She could have climbed box mountain in her house. Is I was just ordering stuff I didn't need. It right. caused me to get into a lot of financial debt because I would just waste money like it would walk. You still waste money. The only difference is you're not wasting money on Amazon. You're wasting it on food. See, this is what happens when you have, I'm not a doctor. I'm not diagnosing foodie. She's got an addictive personality. Like she's got so much emptiness inside. That she's trying to fill up that void with temporary happiness, temporary joy. You know, she, she, like she, she's a dragon chasing her tail. You know, like looking for that quick fix, that little burst of happiness. But the moment that the burst happens, she's right back to where she started. So you got to find something else and something else and something else. She's been chasing happiness through food for years. Look where it's gotten her. She's no more happy or healthy. So in between the food, she was buying the Amazon stuff and stuff for Natter. And it, it all of that stuff is just a distraction. You're distracting yourself. You're escaping from unhappy. You really are. And you never just stopped for a moment to think like, I'm doing all this stuff. And it's not doing any good. Like this formula is not working. I need to find another one. You were distracting yourself with things that didn't matter. And you were not taking care of things that did matter, like your pets. And I find it horribly sad, horribly sad that you are over there chasing men around. You were so man crazy chasing men looking for someone to love you and not a single one of those men ever loved you the one you're with he doesn't love you but how sad it is that you had real love in your house right beside you yes you did you talked about unconditional love you wanted somebody to love you unconditionally you had unconditional love foodie in bbj and sam so isn't it horribly sad? Isn't it disgusting? Isn't it tragic that all these men that didn't care about you, that you wanted so badly to love you back, you spent so much money on them, so much focus on them, and yet your pets, which would not have required thousands and thousands of dollars, they were right there in your own house. You neglected them just because they weren't human males with a penis. You looked at them as being non important. You treated them as old theater props that once upon a time you used them to put in front of the camera and then you got bored and you decided that you wanted to upgrade to men. And the only importance you ever put on BBJ was when FFG and her family got BBJ. And then you saw all the people on her channel giving her tons of super chats. And that didn't make you pause and say, I'm a really awful person. I hurt my cat. All you could think was, Dang it, if I just hung on to BBJ, I could have all that money. That's where your mind went. But it was far too late. 
BBJ is now in a better place with better people. But never once did you say you were sorry for that stuff happening to BBJ. All you do is double down. You suck. Water. Like it actually, I had to grieve that. That's one of the biggest things I had to grieve was how irresponsible uh, I've been financially. And, you know, I'm still cleaning that up and it might take a while, you know, but not, um, not doing it on my own is, is so much better. Like, and not having um, someone in my life who was also taking advantage of me and using me financially. You know? And Salah isn't. Salah's not taking advantage of her and using her financially. I think he is. He just has a different personality than Natter. But he's over there. He's got his hands in all her accounts and all of her money. You know, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not all about that legal stuff. But the attitude that Salah has with Foodie, with the way they go back and forth, it almost feels like a power of attorney thing. You know, like he's got control of her money. Chantal knows how irresponsible she is, but rather than fix the problem and learn to be more responsible, she knows she's out of control in every way. And the only way that she can get some of her stuff fixed is to let somebody else take control of her finances. Because if you let her have her money, she knows exactly what's going to happen. She's going to buy useless stuff. She's going to buy food. So she had to have somebody come in and act almost like a power of attorney and make decisions for her. Sad. You know, somebody who couldn't pay their rent. So I would help them with rent a few times. Somebody couldn't even. More than a few times, you big liar. You helped him more. You helped him with his rent more than a few times. You paid his rent every month. You paid for the iPhone. You pay for the iPad. You bought groceries, expensive groceries from Farm Boy. And what's that other place they used to go to? I forget. Adonis. Is that the place? Adonis? Anyway, you bought him everything. You took him on expensive trips, luxury hotels, all of it. You chose to do that. Despite the fact that people warned you over and over and over again, he is not the person you think he is. But then again, neither were you. They pay their own cigarettes. I would buy them like cigarettes like that adds up in Canada. Cigarettes, expensive um, stuff like that. You know, like, um, you know, somebody would say they needed money for their for like work uniform or something like work equipment and they would use it to gamble or buy drugs. I spent a lot of money on drugs. Like if I think of how much money I spent on that. Um, oh, it... you know what? She brought it up. She put it on the table. So turnabout's fair play, Chantal. You brought this up right here, right now. Are you not going to mention the video that you did? The little confessional video where you told everybody, yes, I have a white powder problem. And I've spent about $4,000 on the white powder. This isn't counting the other different party favors you bought from Natter, including $300 worth of, let's just call them button mushrooms. Yeah, the kind that make you see colors and stuff. Yeah. Natter loved having her around. Not only was she paying the rent, paying the phone bill, paying the cable, buying the groceries but she was also buying party favors from him he was getting taken care of left right and center really makes me mad you know but not anymore like i've learned to just move on and just grieve that um grieve have leaving my pets behind what happened with oh, baby shut up grieve leaving my pets behind foodie we were there we remember you couldn't wait to give up your pets, even your favorite cat, Sam, the male. I remember that night. You gave Sam to somebody else and you had a pizza party. A pet that you had for several years and you are throwing yourself a little pizza party. So talk to me about how much you were grieving, how much you missed your pets. You wanted other people to take your pets. Because you looked at them as burdens, stopping you from getting near Salat that much faster. You looked at them as obstacles. And the moment you didn't have any cats, you were so happy and so free. 
BJ, that's all out of my mind now. I've grieved that situation um, so that it can't hurt me anymore. <coughs> I just, you know what I mean? To me, she's already gone. She's already, you know what I mean? Like, I've just, that's it. She's already buried for me. Um, I Biatch, don't say that. Don't say she's buried. She's not buried. She's alive. She's well. She's healthy being looked after by French fry girl and her family. And little BBJ has everything that you don't have. She's happy, healthy, well cared for, getting her doctor visits, getting the healthy food, alive, having little adventures. Not you though, ain't karma a bitch. I know Sam is okay. I get regular updates about him, so. Uh, that's not really hurting me. I know he's in, he's in a really good place right now. But like the BBJ thing, it's out of my hands. It's something that I've come to terms with. And, you know, there's somebody who did that, who like took her just so they could use her for clout. And they Oh, shut up. I, I'm so sick of her saying that. He, she took her just for clout. Ma'am, A, I don't believe that. B... Didn't you put your cats on camera, using them to get views, using them to get attention, using them to connect with other people in your audience that love animals and might have a cat? Yeah, you did. Using the cats for deflection whenever you got in trouble? You used your cats for YouTube. Don't act like you never did. You did. They can use her to like dig it into me, you know, like I have your cat and you can make all the calendars you want. You can make all the merch you want. I'm not letting it affect me. And that's, it's done for me, you know? So, um, so that's, that's, that past is, is gone for me. Like that whole abusive situation. Um, I'm done abusing you know, my, you know, I'm sure to this day, Chantal, the only regret that she has about BBJ and Sam, you got to know she's kicking herself. She's really kicking herself hard over the fact that if she had taken care of her cats, really taken care of them, gotten their nails trimmed, taken them to the vet, showed a lot of, you know, pet store food, toy hauls, she might be raking in the money. But she was sadistic and she purposely held everybody in emotional. I'm making this up, but it just, there's no way to describe this the any other way. I believe that when Chantal had BBJ and Sam, there was a bit of emotional blackmail. She was holding everybody hostage, knowing that they were concerned knowing that they were worried for the pets, she would let people see how disgusting and filthy her house was. People got to see that BBJ's uh, food and water bowls were empty. We saw her limping around the house. She did not look well, she looked sad. People begged her to take the cats to the vet. They even paid her money. And Chantal just got evil sadistic pleasure by denying her pets care to the point where she actually said out loud i'm not going to take my cat to the vet because it ticks off my haters ticking off her haters is more important than taking care of things in her personal life that's how vile she is but she ever since she gave up the cats she's been kicking herself about if I had just taken care of them and at least acted like a good pet owner, I might be making that money. That's the only regret she has. Self financially, I'm done uh, wasting money. I'm done being materialistic and I'm done um, with so many things about my past that I don't miss. And I think in that, that way I've matured a lot. I, I have different priorities in life. Um, I really want to just start uh, really working on my health a lot more because 
I've gotten to a point where my whole life I just thought, oh, I have another day. I have another day. I have another day to neglect it. And here I am with all these health issues that in my mind, in the back of my mind, knew that I was at high risk of and I was just in denial. I don't miss those behaviors of, you know, dancing around half nude, um, all of that stuff. I find that, you know, I have a different opinion on that. I, I have more self-respect in that way. No, you don't. <laughs> she wants to talk about self-respect. Okay, Miss Self-Respect, if you respect yourself, why don't you get your BDED under control? Because as long as it's out of control, you're not respecting yourself. You are hurting yourself. You are harming yourself. You're harming your body by being out of control gluttonous. If you respect yourself, why aren't you in therapy? Why aren't you going to see doctors? Why aren't you an inpatient? Why aren't you going to counseling? To respect oneself is to take care of oneself and you are not taking care of yourself. So there's no self-respect here. Um, I feel better covered. I feel like I'm respecting my body, like I'm respecting my femininity, my sexuality. You being, and it's only no, for you being covered up has nothing to do with self-respect. It has everything to do with, you know, you're getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and you don't want people to actually see how bad it is. But you've gotten to a point where the abayas, they can't cover it up anymore. You are wearing the biggest size abaya that can be bought. The only thing bigger we have it custom made, but abayas look like bodycon dresses on you. But that's the reason why you're wearing that stuff, Chantal. One person, one person who respects me and loves me. It's the only person who deserves to see that side of me. And you don't even see it. <laughs> he doesn't even see it. He's never there. He's off in the red room with the mysterious blonde, the one I keep seeing in my tarot cards. He don't see you naked, Chantal. Ain't nothing going on between the two of you, girl. Come on, come on, come on. Look, listen, I hate to be lewd, but let's just talk amongst us girls for a second. If he were getting physical with you, we'd know. You'd be glowing with happiness. You'd be walking on cloud nine. You'd be coming on camera saying, oh, my back hurts. My leg hurts. Everything aches because things just got crazy last night. Ain't nothing getting crazy. Nothing. Before, before I never thought that. I just used to think any attention from any male is good attention. You know, I used to think it was like a win to get as much male attention looking at me as possible and now i feel like guarded i feel like no they don't deserve it they don't deserve that piece of me the only person yeah, who of, of course you're guarded of course you are salah he put in the work talking to you reeling you in roping you and putting you in a pen and he knows you're making money He's not going to let any other man get near you as long as you are the low cow that he's getting milk from. You know, he's going to be the only one benefiting. No one else gets to benefit but him. He put the work in, so he's going to make you feel what you want to feel. Chantal, do you not understand this about con artists? They walk up to you. They size you up. They figure you out. They figure out what your weaknesses are. And they figure out exactly how to act and what to say to make you give up what they want you to give up. But you would know that because you're a con artist too. Isn't that funny? A con artist being conned. <laughs> Justice. Who deserves that is my husband because he loves me. He respects me. No, he, don't. he provides for me. He's nope. my protector. And What does he provide for you? Shut up. What does he provide for you? He don't work. What does he provide? You pay for the car that he uses to go get your snacks. He does. He takes a drive there and the drive back, but he don't work. How does he provide for you? 
He gets on camera every once in a great while. He stands by your side with his big goofy smile on his face saying, hi guys. He's not really a provider. He's just like the, the full caretaker that you need around because you can't do simple things for yourself because you got yourself to a point physically where you cannot independently take care of yourself. You got yourself to that point. So therefore you have to pay someone to be there for you to help you do the simple stuff. It's the only person that deserves to see that. He put a ring on it. He gets to see no, that. No, he didn't. You put a ring on it. You put your own ring on. What are you talking about? And experience that everything. side of me. Everyone has an intimate private side and it's not just about how you look, about how thin you are. It's about the chemistry and the relationship that you have with somebody. It's about that intimacy between two don't people. Stop. Stop right there. Please don't say anything else. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Please don't talk about what might be happening in your bedroom because I don't want to think about it. I, no. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Don't put that thought in my head. It's too late in the day. I still got stuff to do. I don't want to walk around with visions of you. And it's like, no. Mm -mm. Look, you may have fantasies of the two of you doing stuff, but fantasies are not reality. I'm not saying that a smaller, thinner person cannot be with somebody who's bigger. I mean, they're, they're all kinds of couples. People come in all shapes, sizes, colors, varieties. Okay, you love what you love. You like what you like. And what turns you on, turns you on. But you don't have much in the way of stamina. So how hot and sweaty can things get in bed? You're sitting perfectly still and you need a fan on you. How in the world could you do something, anything with Salah? Doing something with, for you would mean he would break his back. <laughs> Honestly, he'd break his doggone back. People, And that you could be with the most gorgeous person and not have that with someone, you know? So I think that that's also very important for me, um, having learned those values in Islam uh, to respect myself, you know, like... You know, Allah has, you know, kind of, I hate to say ordered, but, you know, has asked women to um, cover themselves with hijab. And that's to protect their sexuality, to protect from the eyes of everyone else, to protect, to, to get, save it just for one person. Because a woman's beauty is very special in, in Islam. <laughs> so, so when I hear people say, I miss the old you, the funny you. Um, that people, some people just miss me dressing up and, um, doing skits and things like that. That, uh, yeah, I can understand that was fun. That's fine. Um, I could even maybe still do those things, but I just, I guess I just don't really feel up to it these days. I, I feel more like sharing, um, maybe by trying to get well, stuff like that, you know, uh, daily routines, uh, things like, you know, if you were serious about your health, Chantal, you would take it offline. So you could be more mindful of it and take it more seriously versus treating it as just a joke and YouTube content. As long as you continue to do mukbangs, every mukbang says without saying, I don't care. I don't care about my health. I don't care about my issue with food. I am still going to treat both of those things as a joke. I'm not going to take care of either one. And although I should not be eating food on camera because of my issue with food, because all this is going to do is make the issue worse. You know, like I'm, I'm known for a certain kind of content on my channel. So I'm going to continue with that because honestly, I don't know what else to do. I'm afraid to switch up my content and then, People leave. I'm not going to look for anything different. But if you cared about your health, you take it off camera. Do all your eating off camera. Do all that stuff off camera. Don't make it into a show. I cook. Um, I'm just talking like this. 
uh for now you know so i, I do want to get out more and show you guys more of kuwait and i do you know, i want to plan plan our next travel together and i i kind of want to get back to writing but i'm not sure we'll see what since when is, hold on since when is foodie a writer what has she written i've been watching her for years what exactly has she written can somebody clue me in because i'm confused i still just like to write little stupid stories like <laughs> they well the only stories the only things that foodie has ever written like the little mini novels is when she rages in her community post you can tell she when she's really mad because she'll go off in her cp i mean post after post after post after post she'll write an entire book when she's mad when she's not mad though she doesn't want to write anything or bad but i think i, I mean like more like non-fiction kind of thing um because everyone's life is a story. Everyone could write a story on their life, you know. But anyway, I'm, I'm I'm more at peace now, and I'm a lot happier. And that's the one thing that keeps me go wanting to go back to Canada is that I don't miss my past. I was um, very anxious to get the heck out of there and away from that life as fast as possible. And that's because of your bankruptcies because you had a bankruptcy and they told you straight up we're not going to forgive your debt you have to pay it so you hightailed it all the way to kuwait to hide from the tax man and it doesn't mean that it hasn't followed me it has you've seen yeah. me freak out once or twice i've been in a grieving state you know and and the transition wasn't immediate it's listen are, are you looking for sympathy are you bringing all this stuff to the table so that we will feel sympathy for you? Oh, I, I, I really messed up my life in Canada. I got involved with a really bad person, although everybody warned me to not get involved with this person and everybody showed me how bad he was. I still did it. Everybody warned me to not eat so much food or have B moments and try to stop me. But those people that tried to stop me, I would block and ban them or get on my community post or my channel and publicly embarrass them. You, know, you you let your taxes go for years, literal years, knowing that you had to pay them. You just put it off and put it off and put it off until you had another large debt. And you had another bankruptcy on your record. And you thought perhaps that you would just have all of it forgiven. But they said, nope, nope, we're not forgiving you. You have to pay it back. And then you ran to Kuwait, get away. It's not like I moved here, um, took my Shahada and all my problems went away, my personality problems. No, I still was getting provoked into being angry. And No, ma'am, you provoked yourself. You provoked yourself. Even now, like... You tell us to stay mad, but honestly, truly, the only mad person that I see anymore is you. You're always angry, Chantal, always. You're mad, you're frustrated, and yet you won't do what you need to do to fix the issue. With all of your issues, you know what to do, you know how to do it, you just don't want to do it. You've made that decision. And I was still saying things that were hurtful to other people, which I've repented for. And I no, you haven't. I do feel bad for. Um, I don't like to sink to that level. You know, yes, you do. Come on. Look, if you're going to come to the audience acting honest, then be honest. You're an angry, vile person. You love to put people down. You live for that. So just admit it. You're trying to hide the real you that's inside trying to claw its way out. You are not modest Miriam. You are foodie beauty. And foodie beauty is a feral beast. And I'm sorry. In Abaya, 
or he, hijab is not going to cover up that feral beast for much longer. No, uh, I'm getting up there in age, and I think that the most important thing in life is really to just try to be the person that you wish other people would be uh, towards you. You know, golden rule in Christianity, well, it applies to most religions, and it just applies to a basic human level, even if you're not religious. So I really want to just keep that up, keep my life as drama-free as possible, because I really think that that contributes to a lot of mental illness, to a lot of illness in general. It brings down your aura. It just makes you feel like crap, makes you angry, makes you in a bad mood. And it's just, it's not productive to just sit there and talk about other people or to worry about what other people are thinking about you. You know, um, it just doesn't, doesn't pay in any way. So <clears throat> no matter how much you miss that old me, how much, how many people still watch my old videos, how much, how many people still review my old videos, how many people still live in my past on the internet. I don't. And that's the most important thing. That's the only relevant thing is wh how, where I am. You know, Chantal is, <laughs> you know what it sounds like, Chantal? It sounds like all the people that are doing retro reacts of your older content, it's really bugging you, isn't it? Because if it wasn't bugging you, you wouldn't be bringing it up. I mean, it's your older content, but that's why it's bothering you so much. You thought that by putting on this new image, by becoming modest Miriam, and because you have dirty deleted a lot of things that all of that dirty stuff was swept under a rug. And the new Beezers that don't know about it would never know about it. And every time a reactor does a retro react, they get to find out or they potentially find out and you are so hating that you're hating the fact that ffg does retro reacts because the beezers the ones that don't know they're finding out they're finding out this is you trying to do damage control because you know how bad that stuff was now you're trying to tell the audience oh that was my old life and i've changed so much Take it from somebody who's been watching Chantal for years. For those of you that haven't, she hasn't changed. She's exactly the same, if not worse. She hasn't gotten better in any way. She's gotten far, far, far worse. She's just trying to act like that past never happened, but it did. We got the video proof. Where am I at? I'm here in the present with my husband in another country, living in another country with a completely different home. Uh, outlook on life and new values and waking up to get high every day and mask things that were eating away at my soul is not where I want to be ever again. okay okay a little history lesson she didn't just wake up and get baked every day she stayed baked all day she would literally wake up and light one up and she would have one lit up all day and if she wasn't doing that she was doing the edibles and she started out just doing like, say, 75 milligrams, uh, 100 milligrams. Then she bumped it all the way up to a few hundred. And then it became a thousand. And there were a couple of times she did like 2,000, 3,000 milligrams. You know, she graduated to doing like the, the wheelchair edibles. So when you hear her talk about she did wheelchairs, it wasn't like the physical wheelchairs. The wheelchair edibles are just like the really powerful, expensive edibles. She was also doing the shatter bears as well, which are really potent. So, yeah, she did that. She would start out her day being baked and stay baked all day. And then she would just be eating those, those edibles like regular gummy bears. It was insane. I am in a new chapter of my life. It was a bit of a hard transition sometimes because like i said this feels, you know, i'm sorry like, this part right here like it just on my this is damage control this is all damage control because of frenchie and other people doing the retro reacts it's damage control she's trying to get ahead of people watching those and saying oh my god i didn't know this about chantal 
I, I've never seen this stuff. She's trying to get ahead of it. And, you know, like a preemptive strike. This is what this is. Learning things and learning to use those things and just grieving a past, grieving things. You know, I, I, I have a lot of things to grieve in my life, you know, still grieving. Like what? My, my grandmother. Ma'am, ma'am, when your grandmother was sick, you weren't there for her. You want to be up natters behind. And when you did go see your grams, you went to her room, you snapped a picture of her while she was in bed, and you posted it on YouTube, where it should not have been. It should have been in your private collection, just something for family. You did that just to show, yes, look at me. I care about family. You didn't ever care about your grams. The day your grandmother died, you weren't even really crying. You were talking about only hands. Who does that? Who talks about that on the date of their grandmother's death? Um, like I said, my pets, because um, whether you believe it or not, they were a big part of my life. Oh, shut and, up. You know, I made yeah, until they weren't made the decision I thought was right, the best decision. But no, you didn't. You were in a hurry to get back to Kuwait. Because you were afraid if you left Salah alone too long, he might have too much fun with somebody in the red room or the blue room or the yellow room or whatever room. You want to hurry to get back to him because of your insecure, jealous self. Just didn't like the thought of he might be having way too much fun without me. You were in a hurry to just take, let whoever wanted the cats take the cats quickly. You, you were in such a hurry. You did not vet who was getting the cats, if they had a nice home, if they were safe, clean people. That's how you got outsmarted with BBJ. And that's something that you will always have to live with. The fact that you got outsmarted, which it wasn't much of a challenge because you're stupid. So that's, I've learned to grieve that. Um, I think I'm getting to a point where I am accepting that that part of my life is just gone and learning to clean up a lot of the damage, emotional, financial, everything that's come along with living that life for so long, you know, and that's, that's it. Even people admit it. That's why you like to watch me back then. I was a train wreck, you know, but it's, and you like being a train wreck. You, you were enjoying every minute of it. Yes, you were someone's life. This is my real life. It's not just entertainment and it's realistic. So basically, what are you telling us, Chantal? What is the message here? Is the message I was entertaining, being a train wreck, hurting myself, acting outrageously, being vulgar, being tasteless, being profane, showing off parts of my body. I was entertaining doing all of that all of those outrageous things but put me in a setting where i can't do those things i've got nothing else to offer you absolutely nothing else if you take away the drama if you took away the dirt if you took away the outrageous behavior the nudity what are we left with you've not shown us anything of interest foodie You've not brought anything else to the table but that. So drama, rage, vulgarity, nudity, profanity, that's what made you entertaining. So what you're saying is, without saying it, that there's nothing positively entertaining about you. Without the negative, you are boring. That's basically in a nutshell. It's, you know, it's not scripted, so it's not going to stay messy if I if I want to have a good quality of life. And I and I do. So, you know, um, you know, my life might seem a bit more boring. It is. Um, if if you were in it for the drama, of course it's gonna be a lot more boring. But boring is peace for me, and I like that. So yeah, when I hear that, you know, what happened to you? What happened to me? Well, a lot has happened to me. A lot has happened. You know, she it's very funny to me. She talks about peace. She talks about her life is happy and peaceful. At the same time, she still does self-harm content on YouTube. 
when she sits down to do a mukbang, that's exactly what she's doing. She's doing self-harm content. She is an addict getting on YouTube and doing her addiction in full view of the public and expecting YouTube and her viewers to financially compensate her. She wants other people to fund her bad habits and to keep them going. Hence the reason why she has no inclination to stop or to heal herself because for her hurt is profitable up into me and it's been a ride um but i really think i've found the nobody's perfect but i'd say perfect for me partner in salah and there's so much i love about being in kuwait in the middle east um living wise then but she loves the fact that she's in kuwait and she doesn't have to step out of the house that she's got a partner that will go out and just get everything for her and bring it back and no one has to see her and she doesn't have to see anybody else either she doesn't want to go out and do things she doesn't want to meet people talk to people it's all about i want to find somewhere where i can hole up in a room i'll have somebody else handle the money handle the responsibilities, go run the errands, and I'll just sit and be in front of my camera all the time. Living when I was living in Canada. And there are things I miss, of course. Life. You know, friends, family, um, stuff like that. But... Um, Speaking of Canada, foodie, someone to throw on the table. If Salah really cared about you, if he really loved you, here's what we what would be happening right now. He would look at you and say, you know what? You've got a lot of issues. You've got some medical issues. You've got issues where you need inpatient. You need to go home to Canada. You need to get yourself together. Don't worry about me. I'll take care of me. I'll be here for you. Just go home and get yourself straight. If he cared about you at all, he would do that. What he would not be doing is going to the store and bringing back a crap ton of candy, knowing that you're going to eat it all, knowing that you have high blood sugar. That's the action of somebody who doesn't give a crap about you and might be wishing for your demise, in my opinion. You know, inshallah, I will see them again one day. One day. Uh, so, yeah. Even if I did go back to Canada, I would not be the same. Even when I went back last time, I wasn't really, you know, I didn't do a lot of the things I used to do, but. That's because you physically can't anymore. I, I don't know that I would even go live all the time. I would probably just make videos. That's another thing. Thank you for bringing that up, Foodie. Yeah, let's talk about her doing lives. Foodie used to do lives all the time. For anybody that's a VIB, if you're wondering why doesn't she go live anymore, I can tell you why. Because back in the day, Foodie used to make a lot of money doing lives. I mean, it was an entire year where she did nothing but lives, no recorded videos. And the reason why she did that is because she was getting so many super chats, I mean, hundreds of dollars a day, plus membership signups. But for the longest time, people haven't been sending her super chats. And the VIB memberships, well, they're not really coming in. So that should tell you where Foodie's head is at. You know, the way she's looking at it, why should I go live and talk to people if I'm not going to make extra money in super chats or get a bunch of membership signups? It's not worth my time. She's basing talking to all of you on the compensation she receives. So since the super chats have been lacking and the memberships are lacking, no lives. She's not gonna go live. Maybe on a rare occasion, just that's it. She's already said, if she's not making money on YouTube, she's not doing content. It's not about connecting with people on YouTube. It's not about the Beezers. It's about either I'm making money or I'm out of here. Um, or maybe not even tell you guys, you know, 
maybe just go and, and just take a break from the internet. I don't know. But <laughs> um, I definitely, definitely, even though I struggle sometimes with some changes, overall, I do enjoy more being here in this life. And there are things happening to my personality. I think it's just like, I think this is my normal personality when I'm not trying to put on a show and be silly and, and make you guys laugh, you know? Um, naturally, I'm kind of funny person. Like I'm a bit silly in per my personality naturally. But as you grow older, I think that just change dims down a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not forcing anything. This is just how I've been, how I've been. I'm not, I'm not trying to put on a, a you know, all of this is just Foodie trying to be more human, trying to act like she's human and she's not. Sorry, not buy. I'm not buying what you're selling. Not buying what you're selling. Uh, here's a comment from Angela Blackman says, you can still have a personality and be silly and still be respected. Do more talks or go live. Do some more videos of Kuwait. Take us out and about instead of so many mukbangs and grocery hauls. Those get boring. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. People are saying, Chantal, get, give up the mukbangs. Give them up. They're boring. We're tired of it. Everybody's tired of it. The same old video all the time. Okay, so I guess that's it for this react. You know what? I was going to do a double feature. But I didn't realize the react would go this long for this video. So those of you that you wanted to see the reaction to this video alone, you don't want to see foodie eat good news. It's going to happen. <laughs> We're at an hour and 38 minutes. So I'm not going to tack on the other video to this one. I'll just make a separate react for that. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you have, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you guys so much for being here. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye now. See ya.